Hello, grade 12. It's time to talk about babies. We have gone from structures to uh, having copulation to allowing sperm to egg, and now we arrive at when baby starts to develop. All right, so now we're going to start with the basics of how a placenta is going to be formed, how an umbilical cord is going to be formed, um, just the development of that, and what the functions of the umbilical and placenta are, um, and how we really dealt with kind of attachment, but we're going to deal a bit more with attachment at this point. And then in the next um, video, I'm going to look at the actual development, like week by week, month by month, <clears throat> between zero and 40 weeks, so that you can see what's happening and how you developed as from a little baby. Okay, so you'll see that this entire slideshow is just littered with babies because, you know, babies. So what is a gestation period? This is a definition, and I expect you to know this definition. It is the period during which the embryo develops within the uterus until the baby is born. Now, please note that the gestation period of different species is completely different as well. So for instance, a um, elephant, I think, gestates for about two years, whereas humans is only a couple of months. 40 weeks almost exactly all right so human gestation period is generally 40 weeks um, there are instances where you can have premature babies and i will show you pictures of premature babies um, in the next powerpoint present or the next video all right, so after implantation, the blastocyst develops into two membranes around itself. Those two membranes are two membranes you know already, and that is the amnion and the chorion, all right? So if you remember like very carefully, the um, amnion in eggs was specifically for shock absorbing, and the chorion was for the diffusion of um, waste products, okay? These two membranes specifically are called extra embryonic membranes, and that is because they occur on the outside of the embryo. So here's a nice diagram. Um, if you want to briefly sketch it, please don't draw all the cells on the inside. Maybe just draw the like the different layers that you can actually see. Um, and if you forgot about what I was um, the message that Robin had sent yesterday, um, here you can see it's a completely triploblastic cell. Um, it has a sedum that is formed and is now going to create organs on the inside. So um, it says cells developing into a baby, and we have our chorion right on the outside. Notice that the chorion is now starting to create cytoplasmic extensions or those villi-like structures on the outside. Um, if you remember when you go back to um, digestion, you should remember um, what a villi is. It's a, just an extension of the cell itself or a whole bunch of cells that actually create a um, increased surface area and in this instance it will be allowed to create um, attachment and then we have the amnion which is directly outside please remember that there's amniotic fluid all over the place as well so this is what kind of helps that entire thing to happen all right so now this is a direct comparison between a chicken and a human <clears throat> you'll notice that the a yolk sac is completely reduced in a human and that is because of the development of the chorion that is now attached to the mother um, that is allowing for all the nutrition to go directly through this so this is what the difference is between ovipary and vivipary is is that there's a, a connection of some sort even though that they they never actually touch there's no true connection between mom and child there's no tube that connects it's all about this diffusion of um, nutrients across and then that's eventually going to be moved up the um, umbilical cord which you can see over there um, and that umbilical cord is going to ultimately create your um, art well going to be part of an artery and a vein and that is what's going to move the blood around the inside of those um, placenta or the fetal portion of the placenta and then diffusion can occur directly over there so you can imagine there's a whole bunch of arteries and veins and capillary networks and like very dense capillary networks um, and yes there is a picture of a placenta and an umbilical cord towards the end of the slide so hold on to your panties for that all right so now let's have a look at why we need a core a chorion and why we need an amnion as well okay so first we have the amniotic cavity this is filled with amniotic fluid the fetus floats around in the amniotic fluid acts as a shock absorber that is so important keeps temperature constant prevents dehydration and the fetus can grow unhindered okay so because it's floating in water there's no pressure of gravity okay so it's not pushing on anything it can float around and develop as it feels fit um, then we have the hollow rope-like tube called the umbilical cord attaches to the embryo um, attaches embryo to the placenta okay so um, 
attaches the uh, never mind. So we've got the choric so chorioric uh, villi or chorionic villi and the uterine tissue, which makes up the placenta, and that's the villi of the actual chorion itself. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like in real life. So um, if someone had to um, pull their child out in the very early stages, you'll be able to see the chorio chorionic villi right at the top left-hand corner. You'll see the placental vessels, okay, so those are arteries and veins. You have the placenta that's developing at the bottom over there. We have a yolk sac, which is very reduced. We have an amniotic sac, which is surrounding the entire embryo. Um, and the placenta fetal membranes directly on the outside, okay? Then, I want you to please draw this. Take your time, draw this properly. Note where the amnion, the chorion, the amniotic fluid is, what the embryo is, note what it basically looked like. Notice where the placenta is and how that's actually embedded and started to grow directly into the uterine wall or the endometrium of the uterus, okay? You can see the myometrium or the uterus wall over there, and we have the umbilical cord that is directly connecting the, um, Hum or the little developing embryo to the placenta. Um, they asked in last year's final for you to draw a line between where or where you think the umbilical cord goes. And they can ask you stuff like that in your final. So please don't get caught out by this kind of stuff. Um, please note that it goes from the belly components of the developing embryo directly to the placenta. You have to note where it starts and where it ends, okay? Um, and we'll get to the veins and arteries a little bit later. Now, I want you, after you've drawn that, to add all of these to that particular thing. A lot of it is repetition, but it's just important to go over it again, okay? So let's have a look at the chorionic villi, the finger-like outgrowths of the chorion uh, that project into blood spaces, into the uterus of the mother. Then we have the placenta on the left-hand side, forms the attachment of the embryo to the mother, okay? So the word attachment comes up. Food and oxygen pass to the embryo via the placenta, while urea and CO2 pass out from the embryo. Okay, we'll do that when we do functions. Then we have the chorion itself, forms the outer membrane <clears throat> covering the amnion. Then we have the amnion, which is a fluid full sac that secretes amniotic fluid. So we actually have a group of cells, because <clears throat> remember a membrane is made out of cells, and those cells actually secrete amniotic fluid, okay? So the chorion plus the amnion gives you the fetal extra embryonic membrane. We then have the amniotic fluid, super important. Fluid surrounds the developing embryo. Fluid protects the embryo against dehydration and change in temperature, acts as a shock absorber. No, I'm not being weird, it just works that way, okay? So then we have the wall of the uterus, protects the developing embryo. Remember, it's a very thick muscle. Um, thick muscular walls contract during labor to expel the baby. <laughs> what a lovely way. You were expelled out of your mother's uterus. Anyway, then we have the endometrium, which is on the outside of the um, myometrium. And this is a thick tissue which allows fertilized egg to be implanted into the uterus. We have the umbilical cord, joins the fetus to the placenta, consists of blood vessels with no nerves. It is important that there aren't nerves uh, because if pain is experienced through this entire process, the baby will go into serious distress and a whole bunch of drama will happen. Whereas if it's floating in the amniotic fluid, it won't go through any of those any of that drama. Okay, so and also there's no need to connect you to well there needs to be there's, there's no need to have a nerve that runs into the umbilical cord because there's just no need to feel what's coming in and out over there. Okay. Um, also if there was some incorrect stimulation by some sort of you know <clears throat> salt or um, potassium that is floating around over there, the baby could be affected in strange ways. Okay, so the umbilical artery carries CO2 and nitrogenous waste to the placenta. Notice that normally arteries carry oxygen. This carries CO2 because it's carrying it towards the mother. Okay, and this is important. It's swapped. So what the umbilical artery and vein do is the opposite of what your somatic or the bodies, the, the mother's arteries and veins do, okay? So in, a, in our bodies, um, the arteries carry oxygen and nutrients and the veins carry uh, waste products and carbon dioxide, whereas the umbilical artery carries CO2 and waste products, whereas the umbilical vein carries oxygen and nutrients, okay? So it's opposite, alrighty? Um, and remember, an artery is away from the heart and a vein is towards the heart, okay? In this instance, towards the fetus and away from the fetus. 
Alright, so please make a big note of that. Um, they like to, that, that rocks up in a couple of tests. Alright, so let's look at the functions of the placenta. So it's for attachment, diffusion of, and I'm just going to not note a whole bunch, nutrients, mother to fetus, oxygen and carbon dioxide, okay, oxygen from mother to fetus, carbon dioxide from fetus to mother, diffusion of nitrogenous waste from fetus to mother, um, and this is important, allows maternal antibodies to pass to the fetus. Remember, passive immunity, that is going to be where antibodies are already created by an individual, and then it is moved into that into the new individual itself, okay? So this is passive immunity. After the 12th week, the placenta secretes its own progesterone, helping to maintain the pregnancy. If the baby does never doesn't actually produce its own progesterone, you will terminate the pregnancy. Okay, the baby will stop growing, and that is the end of your pregnancy. And 12 weeks into it is quite a bit. It's almost about your first. Well, I just about to say your first trimester ish. Okay, and this allows, and the, also the function of the placenta is to allow for some harmful substances across from mother to fetus, such as nicotine alcohol and heroin how exciting okay it's extremely dangerous to have any of those so um when we get back to school i'll do a whole bunch of little like um tables with you and stuff and graphs where you'll note that the um, average baby weight is lower if a mother smokes during their pregnancy um we will also be covering fetal alcohol syndrome um, I'm not necessarily going to be doing it myself, but I will put up a nice video explaining the whole thing. Um, and also fetal alcohol syndrome was in the question one of last year's final exam. So we need to go through that. And heroin, remember that all of these are going to create dependency as soon as the baby is born. So if the baby is born and is not exposed to any of those harmful substances that they got while pregnancy was occurring, the baby is going to go through withdrawal symptoms and actually can cause some long lasting damage. All right, so let's look at this in a bit more detail. So what we've done is we've taken a little bit of a picture of where the umbilical cord meets the placenta and we've like enhanced it quite a bit. And what you'll notice is right on the top in the middle over there, it says chorio chorionic villi. And um, you'll notice how it actually doesn't touch the maternal blood vessel. So there's um, tissue fluid floating in between over there, which is allowing for um, diffusion to occur from mom to um, fetus and from fetus to mom, but they never actually touch. And that is important. Okay. Um, and then it's also important to note that um, there are a whole lot of people who say, you know, you shouldn't have peanuts and biltong and all those other wonderful bits and pieces while you're pregnant. Um, and we'll go through it when we go back to class, but it's to a large extent, a lot of those substances actually can't be diffused from other to child, so the baby actually won't suffer from that. So it's a bit of an old wife's tale to some extent. All right, so let's have the umbilical cord itself. The umbilical cord develops um, in the fourth week of pregnant of pregnancy, which is quite quick if you think about it. Um, and it contains two umbilical arteries and a single vein held together by connective tissue. There is a substantial amount of connective tissue. Um, and before you're thinking of it, here is what the placenta and the umbilical cord looks like. I really wish I was in class to hear your screams and squirms and all those other bits and pieces, but you can note there's a little ruler at the bottom over there, so you can see how long that entire structure is. So, I mean, that's about 10 centimeters wide, um, and even and if you're giving natural birth, you'll note that after you, you have given birth to the child, the umbilical cord is still attached, and then you will they will cut the umbilical cord from the belly button of the um, baby, and then you'll have to give birth to this bad boy afterwards okay um and then of course you get those weirdos i think it's the kardashians and the, some scientologists they actually take this whole thing out they dry it out grind it up put it into pills and then eat it and i know this sounds absolutely revolting but to a large extent there is so there are so many nutrients um inside of this that it sometimes is actually worthwhile actually eating this after birth maybe not in humans because we have access to a lot of high nutritionist food but um to a large extent other animals actually do it lizards love eating um whatever's left over of their pregnancy just to keep themselves healthy okay so what are the functions on the umbilical cord after the graphic picture substances in the fetal blood diffuse across the placenta from the mother's blood and vice versa. There's no direct contact between mother and child uh, blood. The umbilical arteries carry waste, where the umbilical vein carries oxygen and nutrients. All right, so after this, we're going to do the development of babies, um, and I hope you guys have a good long weekend.